Good evening, folks. This is Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update on Tuesday, December 19th at 11.20 p.m. Mountain Time. Scientists are stunned by massive snowfall increases among Alaska's highest peaks. I guess they didn't check Rutgers Global Snow Lab to see that the Northern Hemisphere snow extent has been increasing for decades. <laughs> Unlucky scientists they are. Now, if you guys read this article, a team of scientists presented surprising data on Tuesday, suggesting that even as the state of Alaska burns to hell in recent years, the snowfall in Denali National Park has increased dramatically during an era of human-driven global warming. Don't these idiots sound like idiots? I think they do. If they came over to the global Rutgers Global Snow Lab, they could easily get a graph to see the winter northern hemisphere snow extent has been increasing. In order for snow extent to increase, you need to increase snow. <laughs> global warming, record snow on Alaska mountain peak linked to climate change. Here is an article where these idiots actually say climate change causes more snow. Amazing. Amazing where we are today in the state of climate science. But it is changing, guys. And I have good news coming at the middle of the video, so stay tuned. Polar vortex will bring winter's coldest temperatures, but no guarantee of snow yet. They say no guarantee of snow yet, yet they show <laughs> up to two feet of snow across North America here. This is crazy. So this is the GFS model for the one to seven day snowfall total from the 19th to the 26th. Heads up, anybody in blue, white Christmas, purple, definitely buried. And look down here, like Mississippi and uh, Georgia. Y'all could get some snow here. I even saw a GFS model where there is snow coming into northern Mexico and Texas on the 25th and the 26th. We'll be covering it in five seconds. Snow's coming as low as 2,000 feet in North State. That's you, California. Cold winter storm system. That's a boom. <laughs> California Department of Transportation warns motorists two to seven inches at 4,000. So that means at 3,500, you're right in the flux there. You're going to be totally fluxed. Winds, gusts may be 60. Freezing temperatures will follow the storm. Put on chains. The CHP can issue, uh, that's chips. Remember that guy? That show was awesome. It looks like Chicago will get polar vortex for Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. That's actually the title. While Todd Skilling claims that there's a 40% chance that Chicago will have a white Christmas, it's more likely that you'll be totally fluxed. I mean, vortexed. It's so fun having these words. Tuesday's rainfall was a new record in Dallas, Fort Worth, because they were fluxed, totally fluxed. And a big freeze is coming thanks to the polar vortex. This is amazing. Can you keep up with the words? More cosmic ray flux in uh, Australia. Severe thunderstorm hits Victoria, leaving 100,000 homes without power. That's a tenth of a million if you want to be a fear mongerer. A quick-moving severe thunderstorm accompanied by destructive golf ball-sized hail. Boom! And that's a big boom if you've got thin windows. <laughs> oh, we'll get to that one. Golf ball-sized hail and strong winds hit Victoria, Australia on Tuesday, December 19th, leaving 100,000 without power and a bunch of people with dented cars. And that's a heads up. From the bomb, which is really close to boom. If you just remove one O, you would get bomb. And that's a boom for the bomb. Let's talk about global cooling. Ethiopian hypericum farm adapts to changing climate. And this isn't the global warming climate change. This is the real kind. This lovely couple grows these tropical plants eight degrees north of the equator in Ethiopia. And they have to install 17 hectares worth of his farm with new equipment to protect against the frost. Huh. Cold nights. Over the last four nights, the Dedans had seen temperatures around and even below zero, which has never happened in four decades. It's something quite new for him. In the past, we've never had frost. Never. 
It started last year and it's returning. And he needs his cash, man. Grand solar minimum much. He needs to prep. He doesn't need to grow those crops for the elites. Now here's coming out of the mainstream. This is the, the change we've been waiting for. The missing link between exploding stars, clouds, and climate on Earth. Breakthrough in understanding how cosmic rays from supernova can influence Earth's cloud cover and thereby climate. It's not new. This is coming from Svensmark. He's just had difficulty publishing over the last decade, and now he's published. And we're going to talk about why he got published recently. Now, this study reveals how atmospheric ions produced by the energetic cosmic rays raining down through the atmosphere helps the growth and formation of cloud condensation nuclei, which we talk about as cloud nucleation, increased albedo effect, cooling of the planet. These are the seeds necessary for forming clouds in the atmosphere. Now, I have found the paper, and I got you the full version of it, which no one will understand, except for 11 people on the planet Earth. But you can peruse it and see why they, they funded this, because in no way does this even appear to debunk global warming. But what it does is it does debunk it. Thank you, Spensmark. Uh, and the new study coming out of Science News, cosmic rays, solar activity have much greater impact on Earth's climate than models suggest. Heads up, we knew that. Because we study the past, the past is the key to the future, and climate is a cycle. And we're going into the Eddy minimum, which is going to eclipse the Dalton minimum because this is the interstadial, the drop-off. This is the Heinrich event, which will occur for hundreds of years, dropping global dropping the planet into a major glacial period. Now, the impact of changes in solar activity on Earth's climate was up to seven times greater than climate models suggested, which obviously is why the climate models over the last three decades have been 700% wrong. Whew. Now, this new research, which is not new, it's been around for 15 years, but is now gaining traction because everyone can see that there's global cooling, including Ethiopian flower farmers that have been doing it their whole life, for goodness sakes. <clears throat> now, the, the findings have been described as the missing link to help resolve a decades-long controversy that has big implications for climate science. Yeah, you better start growing food because everyone's about to starve. Let's talk about the plasma filament that's about to arrive. I'll leave you links to all those articles. We're coming uh, over here to spaceweathernews.com. And you can see a slight bump up in activity on the surface here, up into upper A range. We had some earlier flares, but we're waiting for the plasma filament to arrive. You can see the magnetometer is a little perturbed here. It's acting funny. And if we come down to the electron flux, there is a little perturbation. And here we can see the phi angle changing. So I think that this density increase is the filament approaching and it should hit us at any moment. It might be minor and we will know based on the first bump up here in the K index. If it comes up above five, it could go higher. So we'll be watching it closely because we have uh, a winter storm that could intensify over the next few days if there is increased geomagnetic activity. NASA and NOAA are predicting no geomagnetic storms for the next three days. I am predicting a potential G2 magnetic storm from this plasma filament in the next 24 hours. That's a heads up. One of our subs sent me this Japanese article, which is coming directly from probably not. I don't know how to read this. But if you hit that button up there on the right that says translate, now and again you can get articles from different countries translated for you. If you didn't know that, uh, Google how to translate an article. And you can get actual information from other countries where, which you can read. Now this is critical information because according to Japan, a huge earthquake off Hokkaido is imminent. I'll leave you links to this. It's crazy. The prediction is... 
there's a greater than 70% chance of an M7.8 to 8.5, which means any day now. And an M8.8 or greater has increased by 40%. And that is the announcement. So that is a big heads up for the Japan region because we know what's over there. An 8.8 could potentially create a tsunami that could devastate the entire Pacific Rim, as well as leach radioactive fluids into the Pacific. And, ugh, that would not be good. 3,200 faith on the parent of the Geminids that flew by just two, three days ago is brought some bodies. We had a fireball last night, and we got a big one that had been seen in many states here's a slow-mo this is over Michigan I think don't quote me on it nothing hitting the ground but 3200 faith on clearly dragging other bodies with it We've had two fireballs in the last 24 hours. This one was seen uh, in multiple states, including Wisconsin, Ohio, Michigan, Indiana, Iowa, and Illinois. Or Illinois, however you want to pronounce it. <clears throat> Tonight, I'm going to leave you with this extreme weather. A friend of mine shared this with me. This comes out of Arizona. Guys, this is also from Svensmark. And the mainstream is now accepting that solar activity controls climate. Now you can see clearly from this graph, these are the unadjusted, unhomogenized temperature data that NASA and NOAA has completely destroyed from the mainstream sector. They can no longer get this information. It's been adulterated. But this is the original that I have, overlaid with the solar activity from 1880 to present. And you can clearly see what the mainstream is now catching up on. Whoa, trippy. As cosmic rays increase, global temperature decreases. And cosmic rays are about to increase for the next 300 years to levels never seen in modern history. And if this graph is anything to tell us about the future... We are about to drop off of all of these charts in the next decade. And the main drop is happening in the next three years. And this is coming right from Satire TS. By 2020, we are going to be below anything on this chart, which goes back to 1850. So you should be preparing for the future because you're not being warned about it. Because the next decade brings us to levels that we have no information about. Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. Please share this with like-minded people and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. If we can get through the next four years, you may have time to prepare, but I do not think so. We're already repeating back to weather events from cycle 14. And if the past is the key to the future, then extreme weather events like the snowiest storm in Arizona history is about to happen this winter and next winter and the winter after with each winter increasing in intensity tenfold. And what happened on this snowy Arizona afternoon in December of 1967, on December 12th, is that 11 inches of snow accumulated at the Flagstaff Airport, one of the biggest storms ever. And that was just the beginning. By the 20th of December, the National Guard was saving the lives of millions of people stranded. And this is in 1967, and you've probably never 
heard about it. So if you want to be proactive, I suggest you read this article. I'm not going to talk about it. You need to be about it. Proper planning prevents piss poor performance in a disaster and you're living one. So get the facts and start reading. Be safe.